Welcome to the Backend Engineering Show with your host Hussein Nasser. Today we're going to discuss this piece uh, from Slack Engineering. Slack recently migrated all their web sockets, connections, and architecture from HAProxy to Envoy. That does not mean they fully moved to Envoy, they just moved the web sockets. Uh, architecture and uh, there are a lot of other pieces that are still working on moving them and before we discuss all these kind of things guys uh, in any blog in any engineering blog we as engineers should um, be pragmatic when we read this kind of things like if we see slack move from HA proxy to envoy that does not mean HA proxy is bad right and we're gonna see from this article that the reasons Slack moved has nothing to do with limitations in HA proxy. It's just it's just the way Slack doing things that didn't HA proxy didn't fit with them. And Envoy, they had more experience in Envoy engineer, so they want to instead of maintaining two things, they already had Envoy in place. And instead of maintaining two systems, they want to maintain one. They had more engineers who knows Envoy than HA proxies. They moved to that. Okay, that doesn't mean HA proxy is bad. We're gonna we're gonna find out this thing. Same thing happened with their Uber when we discussed that a few a few months ago, right? The the infamous article they they moved the prompt Postgres to MySQL. Postgres community were furious on how that uh, article is written, and I believe some people will be furious with the way this article is written as well. You're gonna see for yourself, and you, you make the decision at the end of the day as an engineer. How about we jump into it, guys? So the title of the article is "Migrating Millions of Concurrent Web Sockets to Envoy." Written by Ariane van der Stelt, staff engineer, staff software engineer, site reliability, and Radha Kumari, senior software engineer, site reliability in Slack. Let's read the blurb and then discuss the portions of the article that I want to discuss. I'm going to move through uh, the entire article. I'm not going to read it all, obviously, because I'm going to summarize it. But... Uh, so if you're listening in this podcast, so I'm going to try to describe the diagrams. If there aren't, there aren't any many diagrams, so that's good, right? So we're going to explain that and uh, we'll jump into it. Slack has a global customer base with millions of simultaneously connected users at peak time. Most of the communication between users involves sending tiny, lots of tiny messages to other, each other. For much of Slack history, we've used HA proxy as a load balancer for all incoming traffic. Today, we'll talk about problems we face with HA proxy, how we solve them with Envoy proxy, the steps involved in migration, and what comes after. Let's dive in. So here, the first portion of the article talks about WebSockets as Slack. And I'm going to summarize it. Guys, I talked about many times about WebSocket in this channel. I have effectively I have a playlist here. Go watch that if you're interested to know. If you don't know anything about WebSocket, go watch that. Obviously, I always discuss the fundamentals here. You, so you not see tools like Socket IO in my channel at all, or, or fancy stuff like that. I always discuss the bare RFC standard fundamentals here. All right, and how you build it from scratch. WebSocket is a bi-directional protocol that allows you to send messages from the client to the server and the server sends messages back to the client and uh, because it's bi-direction that means it's stateful right because uh, the, there is knowledge between the client and the server they need to know each other thus despite it being built on http which is stateless it is stateful and it's important to mention that because it is very critical for load balancing state load balancing stateful workload is completely different than load balancing stateless workload like http which is in my opinion, much easier. Slack did the hard part by moving all WebSocket connection to that. And so uh, they, they explain here, okay, how do how, how WebSocket works. Obviously, it's a just normal HTTP connection. The first time we establish a TCP, followed by TLS, that, that makes an HTTP connection. And the first request always is an HTTP GET upgrade request. And when proxies see that, they know that this is WebSockets. And once you, with this is successful, you get back the HTTP 101 switching protocol. That tells the client that, hey, the tunnel has, has been established. And then everything you send, the proxy just leaves it alone and then forward it as is to the backend. Okay, so that's, that's how it works essentially. 
baby fuzzing. So yeah, Slack uses uh, WebSocket for all sorts of things, messaging, uh, presence information, whether this is online or not, and uh, for bots, bots consumes WebSockets and to send all sorts of stuff. So we have clients and we have backend WebSocket services. And this logo is Socket.io, which is a tool built on top of WebSocket. And this is basically the load balancer, which moves everything uh, to the backend. And a very critical point here that, uh, that Slack mentions here, they, the HA proxy server terminates the connection closer to the uh, to the client so like if you're in let's say singapore you're going to be served from a local ha proxy websocket uh, ha proxy load balancer that will terminate it and you're going to send the websocket connection but then the back end could be somewhere else right that's that explains some part of the latency that they get you remember the outage that they have in january 4th that cross regions that explains if they it's because that's exactly what they said right the back end could be far apart but the the front end is very close to the server and um, obviously we always as back end we always remember we always say hey make the servers as close as to each other as possible so you get a minimum latency but looks like this is what happened here right so we have back end services and these are terminated with essentially stateful proxying and we know how HA proxy does it, right? We talked about it many times on this channel. It terminates the connection. If if it sees if there is an upgrade uh, request, HTTP upgrade, then it basically switched from a layer seven immediately to a layer four uh, proxying. So it will hook you to one TCP connection on the backend. Right? And I keep saying TCP here because I know everything is HTTP 11 slash HTTP 2. Right? They didn't specify that that though. All right, so now we have we know the back end, we know the front end, we know the load balancers. Let's jump into the reasons why why Slack have moved to Envoy. While we have been using HA proxy since the beginning of Slack and knew how to operate it at scale, there were some operational challenges that made us consider alternative like like uh, Envoy proxy. So let's see what are these uh, limitations. Hot restart. When I first read this, okay, that implies that Envoy has hot restart, but HA proxy doesn't, which is absolutely not true. And if you don't know, guys, hot restart is is basically when you want to reload the proxy with a new set of configuration, but you don't want to drop any connection. Almost all proxies support this now, right? It, it, it was a difficult problem for, for a few years. Most proxies have solved it. Like in 2017, every, every proxy uh, that I know of have fixed this problem. So you can essentially, because when you load reconfiguration, you can change the port, you can add more endpoints, you can add more. And then how do you maintain the new process? You spin up a new process. That's one way to do it. And then that the new process gets the new configuration while the old process just lingers around to quote unquote drain the old connection. And draining is the idea of, hey, let's just let's just receive the connection, but uh, let's just serve the existing connections, but don't accept any new things because you're going to die eventually. That's the idea here. So that's that's how to restart. So let's read through this portion of the article. At Slack, it is a common event for backend services in point less to change. That is essentially the backend services. Due to instances being added or cycled. So yeah, uh, this is old service, kill it, add a new one. So the IP addresses changes all the time. So you need to update the configuration very often. And I'm going to give them that in a minute. The configuration changes a lot. This point goes to Envoy. We're going to talk about it in a minute. HA proxy provides two ways to update its configuration and to accommodate changes in the endpoint. So how, uh, uh, we know that the endpoint, the back end, is part of the configuration. So if your back end changes, you're going to update the configuration. And when you update the configuration, you're going to reload it somehow. There are two ways to do it. The first one is the first one is through the runtime API, which I talked about right here. I made a whole video about how to uh, use the HA proxy runtime API to update the configuration, like add a back and remove a back. And you can do that. And it's going to do it instantly in that same instance, right? So that's essentially 
I'm not gonna use the word ephemeral, but it's not that's not doesn't persist. Does that make sense? It does not persist. You can have options to persist it, but that you can change it on the fly. Just call and run a time API and do it. Now they say here, we use this approach, which is the runtime API, with one of our sets of HA proxy instances, and our experience is described in another blog post. The blog post is titled A Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day at Slack. You can feel free to read that article, but I'm going to summarize it for you. There was a huge outage back in May 2020 that I did not cover, but at Slack. That was not the January 2021. That's what the May 2020. The main reason they claimed is that it was a chip proxy. But when you actually read the article and, and analyze it, it has nothing to do with a chip proxy. The problem was, again, they... The, Here's what happened. Let's summarize this article and then put a pin in it, right? We're now we're jumping to another completely different. We're going back, uh, how many months? We're getting back uh, seven, eight, nine months ago, May, 2020, when an outage happened in Slack. What happened was because of the pandemic, a lot of people started using Slack because everybody is at home, everybody's working from home. So the amount of web sockets and all the connections doubled and tripled. So they had to spin up more backends. They have spin up more backend that they never ever hit during the life of web, uh, Slack at all. And in the, in the pandemic, the pandemic gave us, you, you've seen all the outages that happened to Microsoft, the Google, Amazon, Slack, all these outages because of the pandemic. We think that we're gonna handle no. Even the big guys are cannot handle the, the load when everybody's at home. <laughs> and it's like going, it's like everybody going to the bank and withdrawing all their money. Bank don't have that money <laughs> laying it out, right? That was that's what happened. And then we're learning the big big guys, the big cats are learning great lessons, and we oh. <laughs> and we engineers are also learning a great lessons, which is awesome. All right. So they had they they start spinning backends like there are no tomorrows. Uh, however, now with more backends, you need to load balance those backends. That means you have to update HA proxy to make it aware of those backends. But guess what? How do they update HA proxy? How do you update HA proxy? You need to update the run using the runtime API, right? Well, how do you do that? Well, you need to write a client that does the update. They did. They wrote a custom code to use the runtime API to update that. So as old backends go stale, they supposed to remove them and new backends are added. They add them to this fleet and then update the configuration. Here's what happened. All of a sudden they see that they, the more backends they add, HA proxy is not forwarding traffic to those new backends, shiny new backends. So what happened? You read the article more, I'm gonna reference it below. What happened is there was a bug in the code they written to update the runtime API. The bug was they did not remove the old backends that have been stale from their code. So they kept adding them. And as a result, the new backend didn't get any traffic. So now you tell me, is this the fault of HA proxy or is this the fault of the client that uses HA proxy? So that's that's their excuse that HA proxy didn't didn't function, right? Exactly like Ober did with Postgres to uh, moving to Postgres to MySQL. It's a lame excuse, like I'm sorry, but it's a lame excuse. Okay, it's a bug in your code, so you can't blame HA proxy. So then they said, okay, you can come back at them now. Moving back to today, writing the, the writing this article. I'm gonna move back and say, okay, why don't you guys don't use the runtime API? Use the just use the reload, just reload the whole configuration. And they say with every HA proxy reload, well, we can reload, but remember, this is WebSockets. What is WebSockets? WebSocket is a long running connection that is always alive. It's not it's not simple as a stateless HA pro, uh, request that you send and then you wait, wait for a few milliseconds and then it's done and you can safely kill it. No, this is a long running hours connection. So if you reload, here's what HA proxy does. And here's exactly, exa it is exactly what, what Envoy does. 
They don't mention that, which is deceiving. I don't like that. Envoy and HAProxy does exactly the same thing when you reload their configuration. They spin up a new process, they reload the configuration, and the old process, they communicate with, with each other, the old process and, and the new process, and then they, they essentially exchange information, and then the, 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 old, the new process tells the old process to start draining connection, as we explained. And then what will happen is those can, the old pro process connection will be lingering and running for hours, right? Guess what? Envoy has the exact same problem if you do it this way, but they didn't mention that. I read the whole thing. I'm going to mention it today. Both HA proxy and both Envoy, when you reload them, they do zero dropping the connection. They don't drop the connection. HA proxy does not drop any connections and during the reload, nor does Envoy. But they only mention that, hell, Envoy doesn't drop connection, HA proxy. They say, hey, they didn't say anything. They don't mention that HA proxy, which is, again, deceiving. It's not, it's not cool, guys. If you, you gotta do your homework. If you wanna write an article, don't write it as a hit piece. Just do the ways, weigh the things. I don't know, guys, do you agree with me here? Do you think, don't, do you, don't you think this is unfair a little bit? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, let's go on. But I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you now the point, the plus point to Envoy. Here's the plus point to Envoy. That HA proxy does not have, as far as I know. Envoy allows us to use dynamically configure clusters and endpoint, which means it does not need to be reloaded if the endpoint listed. That's a plus for Envoy. I'm going to give you that. Because most of the 90% of the operation, I just made up number from my ass, are backend endpoint updates, the configurations. Envoy Technically, you don't need to change that configuration. They have a way to dynamically update that, which technically HAProxy has the same thing, right? It's just you have to write code to update the, run with the runtime API. Envoy has it dynamically, it, it, it connects to their, uh, this, the con their console and uh, uh, discover services. And uh, as you this services start discovering, will automatically load, be loaded in Envoy, which is very attractive without loading the configuration. That's the attractive point. That's where they should focus. They should say, hey, HA proxy doesn't have that. We have this, it's, we don't have to write code. Envoy uh, just takes care of that. That's a plus for Envoy, okay? If you use HA proxy to update backends w through the configuration directly, unfortunately, we have to reload. And when you reload, you're gonna have the old processes lingering and uh, the new processes. And then you have a lot of processes running and they didn't want that. A lot of processes, that means a lot of memory. That means, uh, obviously, things can go wrong. Now, Envoy has the ability to hot restart itself without dropping any connection. So does HA proxy. They don't say that, obviously. Right? It's like it's like an ad for Envoy. That's what, that's what we're reading. We're reading an ad, guys. It's an ad read here. It's an ad read. Enjoy this ad read for Envoy. Envoy watches file system configuration with iNotify update. So as the configuration changes, they essentially do a hot restart so that uh, uh, it, it does a hitless uh, update, essentially. So that if they want to change the configuration for Envoy, which has nothing to do, if there's something has nothing to do with endpoint, like something else, right? I don't know, adding a rule, for example, you have to change the configuration, right? That requires a restart. And when you do a restart, guys, when you do that, you have to mention that. They did not mention it. If you change a rule in Envoy, you got to update the configuration. And when you do that, new processes will be spun up and old processes will be kept running. They did not mention that. That's exactly the same thing that they claim that's the limitation of HAProxy. They have that, Envoy have that. But the good point here that I'm going to give them, they don't do that as often. That's my exp assumption. They don't do that as often. And as a result, they don't run into that problem as often, okay? So that's a plus to, for Envoy. But again, the article is written in a very odd way to, to as, as, as I said, it's an ad read. Let's add another plus for Envoy here, okay? Another plus for Envoy. Panic routing. Guys, I, 
it, now they are mentioning the January 4th, 2021 outage, which I covered right here. If you want to interest it, uh, if you're interested, read, uh, go watch my video, full analysis about the outage. It was very, very interesting uh, to learn. It was essentially a re as, as a result from Amazon, their, their cloud provider, there was like a network latency and that caused all sorts of havoc, right? But Envoy actually helped them here. Now, when a backend is marked unhealthy, HA proxy or any other proxy will naturally will not forward traffic to it, as far as we know, right? But Envoy here has a mood that calls panic routing. They said, hey, there's a lot of unhealthy backend services that is a little bit suspicious. I'm going to ignore the status of the health. I'm going to forward the traffic anyway to it. That's called panic routing. And it did help. It was, it was very helpful during our January 4th quote. Quote, this was very helpful during our January 4th, 2021 outage, which was caused by a widespread network problems in our infrastructure. Here they mentioned, because of the above quote, because of the above reasons, in 2019, we decided to migrate our ingress load balanced tiers from HA proxy to Envoy proxy, starting with the WebSocket stack. The major goals of the migration were to improve operability, access to new features that Envoy provides, and more standardization. By moving from HA proxy to Envoy across all of stack, we would eliminate the need for our team to know two quirks of pieces of software. I believe that is the major reason, guys. Because the, the, the engineers at Slack have more experience with Envoy, apparently they might hire new guys, they want to instead maintaining two software they wanted to maintain one which makes sense fiscally and financially and everything right makes sense right so they just hey moved it but the way they wrote this article is just they they painted a proxy ha proxy as like the the worst thing which is which is not good in my opinion i, I don't like that to manage to manage to build and release pipeline and so on. By then, we were already using Envoy Proxy as the data plane in our service mesh. We also have experienced Envoy developer in-house, so we have ready access to Envoy expertise. All right. The next section is not interesting for me. It's just how they use Chef to update, they generate their Envoy configuration. You can read it for yourself. But um, let's skip all that stuff, right? Here's, what, here's the interesting part. Migration to production. Uh, before we migrate that, I'm going to mention something that they did not mention here. Um, and the fact that they didn't mention it, that means they are not using it, I'm assuming. And here is it. There is this a beautiful RFC that's called uh, RFC 8441. I, I talked about it right here. And it's essentially the bootstrapping of WebSockets on top of HTTP2. Okay. Guys. When we use WebSockets on HTTP 1.1, we're going to have a one-to-one -one connection with every single client to a backend connection, to a backend server, to a backend TCP connection, which is wasteful if you have slack amount of connections, millions of connections, right? If we used HTTP 2 on the backend, and it doesn't matter what we use in the front end, Slack can multiplex WebSocket connections into HTTP streams. So uh, you can have tech effectively one TCP connection uh, having HTTP2, right? And then if you have a WebSocket connection coming from H H1 client from the front end, you can multiplex that into an H2 stream in a single stream in a bigger TCP connection. So now you have one TCP connection server in, I don't know, thousands of clients. I think that the maximum is 200 streams, but you can flip and play with that. So now you minimize the number of TCP connections, which is obviously better. It's better to have less connections than more connections, right? So that is a feature of Envoy that is not yet available in HA Proxy, yet they didn't mention that. I don't know why. Are they not aware of that? Because that seems like a very attractive feature for you guys at Slack. You're going to have a single TCP connection with multiplexed WebSocket connections. Now you've just minimized the number of connections on your backend. I'm just interested uh, if they are considering this or not. That would be very interesting too. If they studied that or not.
because Envoy, they, they can just line this up with a with a configuration, right? If their backend is HTTP2. I'm assuming that their actual backend, those guys, those puppies, the backend is HTTP11, maybe. And essentially, HTTP11 with TLS. That's my assumption, right? Again, I might be wrong in anything I say here. It would be good to have someone from Slack uh, comment on this. It would be really good. All right. Now that we mentioned the RFC 8441, which I explained that, uh, HAProxy is actually developing that feature right now in 2.4. And it's going to be... Obviously, guys, I'm not sponsored by any of that Envoy or HAProxy or anything. I just... I'm an engineer that gives you my personal opinion. You can take it or leave it, right? And then and you get to decide whether this product is good or this product is, is, is fit for you. Again, it really depends on your use case. So this is a migration of the of production, and I absolutely loved this. The way they did this, absolutely love it. They used the uh, obviously this is the D WSS DNS entry primary WSS primary dot com the DNS and the DNS they did a weighted traffic so that uh, for the listeners here we're describing a diagram with two boxes. the The upper box is HA proxy no, uh, network load balancer and the lower box is the envoy network load balancer and there's the name server here with two arrows going to the upper box and the lower box the upper box taking 70 percent uh, of the traffic that means 70 percent of the resolutions of the dns goes to the ha proxy and 25 goes to the envoy beautiful i love this this is how they essentially migrated everything so slowly they decrease the amount of the routed weighted routed to HA proxy and they moved everything to envoy and until HA proxy essentially took zero connections and they moved everything to envoy they ran into a few problems while doing that but they fixed all of them obviously so um and yeah that's how they migrated into the production which i absolutely loved very they they it was it was boring and good so it was smooth right here uh they they take a hit at the at HA proxy config, which I quote. We found that old HA proxy config had grown organically over time. It was largely shaped by the model that HA proxy uses. One large configuration that include all listeners. Envoy configuration model uses much more defined scopes that is uh, than HA proxy model. Once a listener is returned, only the rule inside the listener apply to the request. Once a route is entered, only the rules are applied. Uh, we know how, how this configuration looks like in Envoy. It's a nested rule, so it's like you can read it this way. But what they mention is like it took us a lot of time to extract what was important in the old HA proxy configuration, which from what was effectively technical debt. So they had a lot of rules from the HA proxy configuration. They didn't know why do we have it. But they, they have it laying around, essentially, right? So to them, maybe it's a personal thing, but to them, looks like Slack prefer Envoy configuration, reading Envoy configuration over HA proxy. I'm going to leave you as a listener, and now I'm going to show you two configuration. The first one is an HA proxy. The, the, the first one is an HA proxy configuration, and the second one is Envoy. They are identical, okay? But look at HA proxy configuration and look at Envoy. And you tell me which one is simpler to read. To me, it's definitely HA proxy, right? That being said, I do not know how big is the configuration at Slack and how large and how that scales with a lot of requests. I, I, I'm not going to guess that Envoy is going to be less size because at, as a smaller, if I'm building a smaller HTTP server and I wrote only 10 lines for HA proxy config, versus, I don't know, 36 or 40 lines, and it's harder to read. And you guys go watch my Envoy video and see the pain, uh, how I pulled my teeth writing those configuration. Because Envoy is written in a way, again, I'm not dissing any technology here, I'm giving you my personal opinion, and you can see the pain that I went through writing those configuration. They have these large class names, and I understand why they have that, because they want to make Envoy extensible, you know, uh, the whole mantra of open for extension, closed for modification, which we know about, uh, this is the object-oriented mantra, right? So that's why they have class names, so you can write your own class name to be anything, so you can extend Envoy. That's why Envoy became popular, and a lot of, like Istio, essentially, 
built on top of Envoy because you can easily extend it, which is nice. But to end users, engineers, reading that thing is just uh, completely unreadable, very, very hard. You can argue that, hey, let's say, how, what, how many times, how much time do you spend reading configuration? Well, a lot, actually. <laughs> so I want my configuration to be simple. And the other atrocious thing is they use this stinking thing that's called YAML, which I absolutely hate, right? And uh, and then that will struggle with spaces and taps and all that stuff. Ugh. Right, so you have to have tools to write configuration, which is like, what? Uh, yeah. So, Envoy is good. HA proxy is good, guys. Both of them are good. Some features, uh, some features that Envoy essentially are better for Slack in this case. The HTTP 2, uh, WebSocket, WebSocket on top of HTTP 2 is a good one. They didn't mention I don't know if they're using it or not. Or they're planning to. Uh, HA proxy does not have that yet. They are developing that. But again, the idea of features is is moot because any any proxy, unless it's an architectural low level change, any proxy can implement any feature and can can catch up. So features having features is not really a, a, a criteria, I guess. For it's one of the criteria, but it's not the major criteria because proxies can pick it up. Software can pick up features like that easily, especially if you have teams behind it. But the simplicity, the scalability of the things, and um, Envoy did have an edge over HA proxy. I gotta say, the dynamic endpoint loading is an edge for Envoy over HA proxy. So that means they do not have to reload it as often, but sometimes they do have to reload it. All right. Here's another feature I forgot to mention, and uh, I'm not sure if HA proxy supports that. But here's the thing: in case, and they don't mention this here. They actually uh, let's go through that. Actually, the hot restart and invoice. Let's go through invoice now. Read through. Now we're reading through the hot restart feature in in invoice, and I'm not sure that HA proxy or other proxy support that. This is this is a game changer. This is good stuff. So let's read it and let's discuss. Quote, Envoy Hot Restart supported was designed so that it will work correctly even if the new process that is being spun up, obviously, after you reload the configuration, and the old Envoy process are running inside different containers. So, you could be different containers, different operating systems altogether, different machines? I'm guessing. Communication between the processes takes place only using Unix domains. So, we talked about the communication between the processes itself, which HA proxy does, right? HA proxy still communicate between the old process and the new process to, to, to effectively kind of gossip and tell the old process, hey, start draining, hey, stop accepting connection, hey, do this, hey, do that, copy, copy the list uh, file descriptors, Co give me the your listener sockets, all that stuff. There is happening. Envoy here says, hey, we do that. Even if you reload in a completely different process, we will find that old process and we're going to communicate with it. So in Kubernetes, this thing is really powerful, right? In, in a Kubernetes where everything is stateless, where you can shut down and reload and the new process will be in a completely different container. That's a plus. And I'm pretty sure other processes will start picking this up as they become cloud native all right, guys, that is it for me today. Uh, I think I discussed all that I wanted to discuss. What do you think about this article? Regardless of whatever I said here, I love technology. I love these kind of discussions, right? And I believe we learned a lot from this article. So Ariane and Rada, thank you so much for an absolutely amazing, well-written article. We have, obviously, we with every article, we have criticism. So let's take it with a sportsmanship here. And uh, yeah, at the end of the day, HA Proxy didn't work for Slack. They moved to Envoy and they're happy. So I commend all the engineers at Slack who worked very hard to do the migration, to implement this thing. And they wrote obviously a lot of code to get this running. It wasn't smooth because they found that there are features that are in, 
NHA proxy that is not available in invoice. So they started, they had to rewrite this stuff and chef their custom configuration. All right, guys, what do you think about this article? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.